Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So the CEO of Bud Light actually sat down and had an interview with CBS and he said a whole lot without saying much at all. So I'm going to react to the interview. Some headlines are reporting CEO of Anheuser-Busch says he has no regrets, but that's not exactly what he said. In fact, there was a lot of fence straddling. And at the end of the interview, we still don't know whether he supports Dylan Mulvaney, whether he regretted the whole thing, whether he thinks it was ill-advised. And he repeated his, it was only one can, basically saying that it was just a gift that they sent to Dylan, as well as hiring a whole advertising agency and having Dylan frolicking in the bath as part of the campaign. <laughs> but you know, it was just one can. But first, Anheuser-Busch has come out and said that they have not fired the VP of marketing and the other marketing exec. It had been reported that these marketing executives had officially been fired rather than just going on a leave of absence. Anheuser-Busch denied a report that it had fired Alicia Heinenschein, the marketing VP behind Bud Light's disastrous campaign with Dylan Mulvaney, and that she was gone for good. Heinenscheid and the group VP of Anheuser-Busch's mainstream portfolio, Daniel Blake, were blamed for the ill-fated campaign with a transgender social media star and were said to be taking a leave of absence from as early as April. However, a current regional head of marketing told the Daily Caller that Heinenschein and Blake are actually gone, gone. The source, who was granted anonymity for discussing internal company policy, added, To my understanding, if we publicly announce the word fire, it opens the potential for them to sue us. That's why we said leave of absence. And that's what we all thought. <laughs> you know, it's a nice way of saying they're out on their ear. But obviously, when you publicly say that somebody has been fired, that has very negative connotations. They use euphemisms so the person can move on and get another job and not have their reputation completely ruined. So I understand why they say things like leave of absence or, you know, they decided to move on with parted ways amicably and language like that. So that's what a lot of people thought was happening. So Heinenscheid was reportedly axed because the wholesalers would have had an absolute heyday with leadership if they didn't remove her, another source said. So a company's not going to want to have a part to play in ruining a former employee's future job prospects, especially when it wasn't for something like misconduct or anything like that. It was just the marketing campaign didn't work out and it's damage control. We have to get rid of you now because a lot of people are offended. I think that's what happened. But, you know, they haven't publicly, they can't publicly come out and say they were fired, you know, they screwed up big time, we had to get rid of them. They can't talk like that, that's reckless. <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting to see. But apparently it's been denied. The insider added that Blake was actually awesome and suggested that his sacking wasn't warranted. I think he was just caught in the crossfire, but also he did hire her. So that's a fault, the source said. Wholesalers were told they are both gone for good by leadership during in-person conversations. They already shifted all their direct reports to new people and the head of marketing. The source added in text messages obtained by the caller. So the last we heard from Anheuser-Busch is that they are on a leave of absence and since then they have said absolutely nothing. Anheuser-Busch, U.S. CEO, that's Brendan Wentworth, we're happy to say, joins us at the table live and in color for an exclusive interview. Number one, we're glad to have you here. Yeah, many you. Many thank people you. in your position, Mr. Wentworth, would be running for the hills at this point because since April, you all have faced a lot of incoming. How and why did it, did it go so off the rails? Because that certainly wasn't your intention when you did one can to one person. Yeah, it's been a challenging uh, few weeks. And I think the, the conversation surrounding Bud Light has moved away from beer. Uh, and the conversation has become divisive. And Bud Light really doesn't belong there. Bud Light should be all about bringing people together. And there's been impact on the business. And I think that's publicly covered on Bud Light specifically. So he's definitely repeating his initial statement, the statement that people weren't really impressed with. And this would have been an opportunity for him to you know, give that apology, that would have been nice. But clearly, I think it's a lot of the same sort of thing that we're going to expect. They're just going to play it safe. They don't want to alienate either side. And they're talking about they didn't want to divide. But yet they inserted themselves on a very divisive issue in 2023. 
Yeah, so uh, what was but, your intention? Take us to the beginning. What was your intention? What were you all trying to do here? And you've done this before, these promotional campaigns. Yeah, it, it was, just to be clear, it was, uh, it was a gift, um, and, it won, and, it was, uh, and it was one can. Uh, but for us, you know, as we, as we look to kind of the future and we look to moving forward, we have to understand um, the impact that it's had. And like I said, you know, uh, that, that impact has, has taken place. But it's the impact on our employees, the impact on our consumers, and as well, the impact on our partners. And I think I want, one thing that I'd love to make extremely clear uh, is that impact is my responsibility. Uh, and as the CEO, everything we do here, I'm accountable for. Given the moment we're in, this moment in America with trans issues at the top of a Republican social uh, or conservative uh, political agenda, knowing what you know now, if you could go back, would you send this can to this one person again? There's a, a big social conversation taking place right now, and big brands are right in the middle of it. And it's not just our industry or Bud Light. It's happening in retail. It's happening in fast food. And so for us, what we need to understand is, deeply understand and appreciate, is the consumer and what they want, what, what they care about, and what they expect from, from big brands. So basically, <laughs> he doesn't say anything there. He really doesn't. Now, initially, he said that I take full responsibility. He acknowledged that it's his fault, basically, that he takes responsibility. So that's that's good. But of course, he didn't answer the question. He never said yes or no. He never said, in hindsight, you know, perhaps it wasn't the best move. I mean, that in itself <laughs> would have been a nice way of saying we screwed up royally he spoke about the employees the small business owners the people who heavily rely on the companies like the wholesalers and you know that does pull on people's heartstrings we don't want to hear about people who had nothing to do with this campaign suffering so that does pull on the heartstrings but at the same time it's up to anheuser-busch to fix it it's not really up to the regular consumers to fix it it's up to the company to fix it playing it safe not answering the question directly, straddling the fence, still wanting to appeal to both sides, I guess. Or I guess he wants to bring it back to just, we're all about the beer. So this is a part of why you're getting it from all sides, because I asked you, would you do it again? And people on the, on the trans rights side of things, uh, supporting that community, want you to say, yes, of course, we want that fortitude. Uh, and, and, and people on the right would criticize you for saying yes. So uh, where are you on the issue? I mean, was this a mistake? You know, we, uh, Bud Light has supported LGBTQ since 1998, so that's 25 years. And as we've said from the beginning, we'll continue to support the communities and organizations that we've supported for decades. Mm -hmm. But as we move forward, um, you know, we want to focus on what we do best, which is brewing great beer for everyone, uh, listening to our consumers, being humble and listening to them, uh, making sure that we do right by our employees, take care uh, and support our partners, and ultimately make an impact in the communities that we serve. Okay, so again, he refuses to say whether it was a mistake or not. Just reinforcing the fact that they have supported LGBTQ rights uh, for the longest time, but yet not talking about whether or not they support Dylan Mulvaney and have any regrets about that. Bringing it back to the beer too, easy to drink, easy to enjoy, bringing it back to that, but perhaps that's what they should have just stuck to to begin with. So you did point out that Anheuser-Busch has in the past supported the queer community. In fact, you had these cans uh, in 2019 that were rainbow bottles that were sold in stores all that. across the yeah. country. Um, but the political arm of Anheuser-Busch has donated to an anti-LGBTQ plus politicians. Um, so where do you stand and where does the company stand on queer rights? You know, as from uh, we support politicians that support our business. And when we say that, we talk about things like uh, things that, that work for the industry allow us to grow the business, allow us to employ more people uh, and really help drive the economy. Wow, just bringing it back to business. That's clearly what he wants to do is just focus on business, focus on beer. Uh, we support politicians who support our business. Okay, but then you're going to get people on the LGBTQ side who want you to say that we denounce anybody who's against you know, our rights. But it's frustrating on both sides that he's not given a direct answer. You talk, you said uh, at one point I heard you say, we're listening, we hear you. What did you hear and how has it affected your employees? I'm, I'm curious about how they're feeling and how they're dealing sure. with it. Good question. I actually like the questions that this panel are asking. I think they're asking good questions. What exactly did you hear? He keeps saying, wanting to know more about their consumers or to listen to what their consumers are saying. 
but he's not addressing the elephant in the room. He's not addressing the big issue, which is why you're being boycotted. He's not dealing with that. He's not addressing it. He's saying a lot, but when it comes to the issue that everybody's talking about, he's silent. To all of this. Our employees, um, we have 65,000. If you look at the 18,000 Anheuser-Busch employees, and you look at the 47,000 Anheuser-Busch wholesaler employees, and they're full of pride and they're full of commitment. Uh, and so it's really a privilege and it's humbling to have the opportunity to, to lead the organization. Um, when you say listening, you know, I've been out to many of the impacted markets. My team has been out to many of the impacted markets. And over the last month, we've talked to over 100,000 consumers and their feedback is very clear. What is it? The feedback is to reinforce what Bud Light has always meant to them, which is good times, goodwill, and easy enjoyment. And we have that all packed inside of our summer campaign that we launched last week. We're in the middle of the NFL. I know Nate's not here, but we're in the middle of our NFL yeah. uh, campaign that'll be out in a few weeks. It's right there. And I think the fact remains that millions and millions of consumers enjoy Bud Light each and every day. But and they're they do still it. mad though, Brendan, because the sales have dropped. How are you handling that? I mean, no. as CEO, I, I just, I, I, I wanna know what this has been like for you when you've had so much vitriol on all sides, your sales are dropping. People, you know, you, we have people firing guns at Bud Light cans. I mean, it's just gotten really so, yeah. off the chain crazy. Yeah. So how have you, how are you grappling with that, handling that? So he just reinforced the whole easy to drink, easy to enjoy, good times. People aren't saying that. When you go to talk to people, they're not saying, ooh, good times, focus on good times, focus on easy, no. They're talking about Dylan. And why did you do that? And how are you going to address it? This is why we're boycotting, because we don't want this shoved down our throats. So how are you going to address that? Are you going to apologize? I don't believe for a second people are saying, you know, focus on good times. We're so looking forward to your summer campaign. No. And we've seen the responses on Twitter. That in itself speaks, you know, speaks volumes. <laughs> I think it's the impact honestly, on the employees that weighs most on me. But again, as I mentioned, seeing the pride and the commitment that they have working on behalf of a 165 plus year old American institution is what gives us energy as, as, we, as we look to move forward and focus on what we do best. Yeah, Those it's employees, so much bigger than a business story. It is so much bigger yeah. than a business story. And I know this new campaign, uh, this new ad campaign is gonna focus on the people behind the beer. Uh, yep. They've faced you know, confrontations just for driving a Bud Light truck. If mm -hmm. you're a distributor, you face confrontations for selling the beer. And uh, there have been bomb owned, threats. The LAPD true. had to do a sweep through a brewery in Los Angeles, right? This is yeah. all happening. So when you... When you hmm, interesting. Who, who was responsible for that bomb threat? They never specify. <laughs> Maybe it was people who wanted you to reaffirm Dylan since it was in Los Angeles. I'm just speculating because they haven't specified. You have these conversations with these folks. I mean, I imagine some frank words are exchanged. They're upset. What do you say back? And is there any financial assistance to them? Well, for, you know, we have, we announced uh, a couple weeks ago or last week, the, we are announcing investment for our frontline employees and their employment, as well as financial support for our wholesalers. Has that started? That has started. The money's yeah. going out. Mm -hmm. Wow. And when you, when you look at the, when you look at the organization, um, I mentioned it's 65,000 people when you put it all together. Mm -hmm. And if you extend it even a little bit further, it includes American farmers, the folks that make our high quality ingredients. And the campaign, the, the, the campaign is all about celebrating them. Yeah. And again, these are, these are farmers, these are brewery workers, these are drivers, merchandisers, sales reps, everybody that brings our industry to life and our business to life each and every day. And so, it's what makes it tick. So, how so, you know, I think that's going to be their focus. That should be interesting to see how that goes, because that will appeal to people, uh, showing the people behind the scenes and everything. And, you know, nobody likes to see hardworking, regular Americans suffer over this. And I feel that's the route they're gonna go down. They're gonna say, look, at, look what's happening to our wholesalers. Look what's happening to our employees. We've had to give out financial assistance. These are the people behind this brand. This brand is American. This brand is doing its bit for the country. This is what they're gonna put out there in their, um, in their next campaign, I think. So it'll be interesting to see whether that has an impact or not. How much is this, this marketing boo-boo, whatever you want to call it, uh, costing Bud Light in the end with the drop in sales, with the financial assistance, with the new ad campaign? I mean, you roll all that together, it sounds like tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. 
we're focusing on investing behind the brand right now. So we're actually increasing the investment on Bud Light three times um, this year as we move forward. I know so you say to investing forward, to our, our, and I think that's the right attitude. I get mm -hmm. it. But what was the most difficult part for you navigating? You've been CEO for the past two years. Two years. Yeah. What is it? Wow. Said so he'd been CEO for two years. Oh, my goodness. And basically, he's saying they're going to just keep throwing money at the problem. He keeps talking about investing. They're just going to throw money at the problem. I think it's a very expensive way to eventually get around to apologizing. Very expensive way to do that. What's this been like for you? It, it's, it's been, I what's know, weighed I, on me the most has yeah. been, as I mentioned. Your employees. The employees. A little more gray in the beard. But you are. A little, little more, yes, but I think it's been coming for a couple years already, yeah. even before this. Brendan, we should point out that you're a former United States Marine, and you were also at the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA. Correct. So you know a little bit about stress. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just a little tiny bit. Just a little yeah. bit. Uh, how did you go from the CIA <laughs> to Anheuser Bush? You know, I, I thought the, the highest calling that anybody can have is serving the country. Uh, but for you know, personal reasons, made the decision after eight years in service of the country to, to move into, into business. I worked for PepsiCo for a number of years, and I came here 10 years ago, and I've been in this position for two years. You still and like this job? I love this job, so, and I love the company. Uh -huh. And it really is, as I mentioned, an American institution. And it's really, to me, one degree of separation away from the United States, the, the American flag. And so even though I'm not serving the country anymore, I still feel like I have an opportunity uh, to support uh, the country. And that's exactly what Anheuser-Busch gives us the opportunity to do. Okay, so that's what they're gonna keep putting out there. They're gonna be patriotic, they're gonna be serving the country, talking about regular people, employees, hardworking Americans. That's the route they're taking. And I think that's, you know, I'm sure it's gonna be some nice campaigns, but I don't know if that's gonna get anybody to go out and buy Bud Light anytime soon. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves and God willing, I will see you in the next video.